Hello and welcome to my vlog. Today we're going to talk about angel visitors to earth. It is not simple. It is actually very difficult to travel from one of the levels of heaven where there is light and love and the spirit or angel are less dense and less matter and more energy. They sacrifice a lot to come to earth to assist us. The spirit Kathleen tells us about it. Let's begin. The spirit Kathleen told the Reverend G. Val Owen about the complications of high spirits, angels, coming to earth. It is no light matter, I do assure you, to receive the command, go forth downward, for as we proceed earthward, both the brightness of our environment and of our own persons also grow less and less and by the time we reach the neighborhood of earth, we can but with difficulty see about us. The higher level of the spirit, the less dense, meaning more energy and less matter, is the spirit. Even for spirits traveling within different levels in the spirit realm, the transition is not simple. The solar system, the galaxy. In the book Workers of the Life Eternal by the spirit Henri Louise, Psychographed by Francisco Chico C. Xavier, Andre Luis, who resides in one of the lower levels of heaven, was part of a group who had to prepare a special chamber to receive a high spirit. Collectively, they were requested to concentrate their will to create a pleasant atmosphere inside the chamber so the spirit could materialize there and talk to the group. The organizer of the group who invited the high spirit, Asepleos, told them more about who was coming. Asteplios belongs to the redeemed communities of the plane of the immortals in the highest regions of Earth's spiritual realm. He lives far above our notions of form and in conditions that are inconceivable to our current concept of life. He has already lost all direct contact with the Earth per se and could only make himself felt there through messengers and missionaries of great power. This sacrifice in coming to visit us is to be appreciated, despite our improved position in relation to incarnate humans. He rarely comes here. Andre then finds out that a spirit like Asepleos will only reincarnate on Earth every five to eight centuries. Then Andre asks if Asepleos is the highest spiritual form to be found in the universe. He receives the following answer. Not at all. Asepleos is associated with other self-denying mentors of terrestrial humankind. He is part of the highest echelon of the community to which he belongs, but in reality he is still a spirit of our planet, although working in the highest realms of life. We must travel for a long time in the evolutionary arena before we can follow in his footsteps. However, we believe that our sublime visitor, longs to be part of the board of representatives of our orb in the glorious communities that inhabit Jupiter and Saturn, for example. In turn, the members of those orbs anxiously await the moment in which they will be summoned to the divine assemblies that govern our entire solar system. Among these latter are those who carefully and watchfully await the minute in which they will be called to work with those who maintain the constellation Hercules, to whose family we belong. Those who guide our group of stars naturally aspire one day to make up the crown of celestial spirits who support life and guide it in the galactic system through which we move. And did you know, my friend, that our Milky Way, a breeding ground and fount of millions of worlds, is just one single detail of the divine creation, a mere corner of the universe? Hence, there are an unknown number of levels to climb before one sits at the table with the supreme intelligence, and at each step one is transformed into an ever higher ratio of energy to matter. Until one day, billions of years from now, a spirit living around the earth will become pure energy. An Angel on Earth Kathleen tells Jivao Owen how she must become accustomed to the conditions of our planet when she descends from her heavenly sphere. This at first, but by and by our eyes become attuned to the coarser vibration 
impinging on them, and then we are able to see. This also comes more readily by practice, but it is a blessing only in that it enables us to do our work among you, and not by any means to be desired of itself alone. For the sights we see are mostly such as do not give us cheer, but much heart-rendering to take back with us into our brighter homes. Kathleen reveals that high spirits are not devoid of emotion. On the contrary, they are love personified and as such are deeply troubled by the acts we commit on each other here on earth. When we see selfless individuals who travel to war zones as part of organizations like Doctors Without Borders, we get an idea of the dedication and love that motivates high spirits that come to us into this chaotic and violent planet. Kathleen dives deeper into the process of adapting to our primitive environment. As we approach the earth, the effect of it is not so apparent to our senses, but it is about us nevertheless, laves us, penetrates through us, and permeates all our being, and by it we are sustained, as the air tube sustains the diver in the ocean floor, where the light from the whiter, freer atmosphere above is dim, and he goes heavily by reason of the denser element in which he moves. So it is with us, and when we find difficulty in speaking, so that we be heard of you, or make mistakes in our wording, or even in the manner of the message, then be patient, and do not ever be thinking that some deceiver is at hand. For, bethink you, friend, how difficult it would be for one diver to speak audibly to another, both helmeted and with water between them, and then you realize how much of patience and steadfast endeavor on our part is needed and will perchance more readily give us a more patient hearing on your own. Kathleen lays out the hurdles that stand in the way of open communications between two dimensions, yet the obstacles, while formidable, are not insurmountable. Love and dedication will win through. After each attempt, high spirits return and are refreshed. But when we, our labor done here below, face us about toward the upper reaches of the heavens of God, then we the more readily feel the stream of life flowing from the distant home of rest and refreshment. There is an immense effort to facilitate information about the spirit world and why we must strive to become more spiritual and less materialistic by the forces of light. Spirits, such as Kathleen, are toiling tirelessly to open our hearts this is the spiritual revolution that is happening before our very eyes. The spirit realm has abandoned communicating to the high priest and religious orders, for they hid the messages, or worse, miscommunicated them to make them appear to give the priestly class more power over the masses. Spiritism is bringing the message that we, each individual, are responsible for opening a channel to the higher realms. Via near-death experiences, out-of-body experiences, visions, meditation, and most importantly daily prayer, the spirit world encourages all of us to begin a daily dialogue with the other side. It will take time and effort. Start small, speak from the heart, calmly listen to your conscience, and heed what it tells you. After time, you will become proficient in discerning the signs to guide you. If you are interested more in how the spirit world guides us, please read my book, How We Are Guided by Spirits, Book 3 of Spiritism. Book 3 illustrates the ground game of the spirit world via the messages of multiple spirits to the Reverend G. Val Owen. We are presented examples of how the spirit realm above us peers down upon their unruly students. The process of tracking and modifying behavior on an individual and a collective basis is revealed. Even the broader direction of human society in the future is posted for all to see. God bless.